All right, welcome everyone. As everyone joins us today, uh, we're gonna have a huge, huge group of people here. Uh, so I am really excited uh, for our first ever Master Your Por Portfolio um, Photography webinar. So, um, and I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, it's wonderful to see you, Terry Moy, Veronica Yankowski, Ken Sexton. Um, this is awesome. We got all kinds of awesome people, Rakesh, um, I see uh, Marcelo, um, all these wonderful people that are, are um, uh, photographers and photographic consultants. Um, welcome everyone. Hey there, oh, great to see you, Terry. How hey are you? Hey there, Kevin, good. Wow. Hey, what's going on, Veronica? Hey, honey, how are you? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful to see you. Good, you too. Awesome, awesome, all right. So uh, we have a few minutes before um, uh, before one o'clock and everything begins. Um, but uh, I, uh, I I kind of want to um, start out before everybody joins, um, letting you guys know that um, not only do we have a couple of our favorite photographers that have attended um, multiple photographic workshops with the photography workshop series over the years and have created just absolutely mind blowing images, the greatest images of their lifetime, but also. Um, I'm really pleased to announce that we're going to bring on one of the top uh, photographic agents um, in the United States, and um, I am really excited to bring aboard Janice Moses. Uh, Janice Moses represents, and uh, she is literally one of the top New York photography agents that reps, um, and these are the photographers that are in the top one one thousandth of one percent of photographers that are represented by a top tier agent in New York. Um, so I am really grateful that she's going to be joining us and can offer her perspective on essentially what um, the clients are going to be looking for in your portfolio at 2020. And, um, and also, uh, if, from an agent's perspective, many of you guys probably want to be represented by a top tier agent. Um, what do they look for in a photographer's portfolio um, if they are represented? So, um, so I am uh, I'm really excited to bring her aboard and have her talk about that. Um, and uh, I think that um, many of you guys can ask her questions as well. Um, she's, uh, she's an incredible person. I've known her for over 10 years. And I've been fortunate enough to, um, you know, when I was 26 years old, I flew to New York and I, um, uh, I met with all these different photography agents and clients, art producers, ad agencies, magazines and stuff. And I do this all the time. Um, which you guys all should be too, uh, regularly. Um, I would say at least like once a quarter meeting with, um, you know, with big time people in major markets. Um, uh, so when I met with, um, uh, with the great Janice Moses, um, it, was, it was an incredible pleasure because not only um, was she the top one of the top tier agents um, at the time and still is, um, but uh, she was also very receptive and, and excited about what my portfolio uh, brought to the table. But at the time, my photographic portfolio was not exactly what she was looking for and she wasn't ready to essentially represent me um for you know probably a number of reasons but one probably because i'm yeah i was very young um i probably didn't have a lot of um, big names in my book yet about a lot of big um, brands and advertising campaigns um and also you know 10 years ago i wasn't the same photographer as i am today um so um it, it'll be interesting to kind of hear her perspective on all of that um but to me um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be represented by four different agents in my career, and a lot of it has to do with my photographic portfolio. Um, but also, I've met with many, many, many agents over the years, um, and every time I have a meeting with them, whether they're interested in me or not, I come away with so much knowledge and experience that makes me a better photographer. Um, and today is going to be a really op uh, amazing opportunity to hear some kind of inside information about what people look for um, in photographic portfolios. Because I, you know, I think for many of us, uh, we don't really know um, what to present. Uh, we don't really know how many images there are or there should be in a photographic portfolio. And I'd love to hear Janice's perspective on this. Um, I have my perspective. Um, usually it's pretty standardized, but everybody has their different view. Um, and then what that portfolio is supposed to look like. I think that's one of the most important things. What does my portfolio represent? Who you are as a photographic brand? And what does that mean? And what does that mean to the clients or who the audience is? 
Now this means not only if you're a commercial advertising photographer, like Janice represents all these world-class top commercial advertising photographers, um, and I shoot high-end advertising campaigns, and I also shoot fashion, um, but it also means for portrait photographers, consumer photographers, wedding photographers, photographers that want to essentially take their consumer photography to the next level as well. What does that mean to you? Um, what is a, a world-class portfolio? How important is that? Why it's important today? And what do we really need for that portfolio? Um, you know, whether you're architectural, um, automotive, um, product photographer, whether you shoot travel photography um, or portraits, weddings, um, animals, uh, you know, or if you're shooting huge ad campaigns for Pepsi or um, major, major fashion editorials for Vogue, everybody needs a portfolio in some way or another. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today as far as what do we need in your book um, and what do we need to get there and why that's important. Um, so, uh, and also, by the way, I have, um, uh, I know uh, Janice, we have you on here. I know you're here live. I'm going to ask you to start video and um, hopefully you can set up uh, video and also audio so we can hear you talk. There she is. Awesome. Great to see you, Janice. And uh, right now you're on mute. So let me um, see if we can unmute you so we can hear you. Um, all right. So uh, now, I mean, it's about five minutes till one. So we're going to have a huge inundation of hundreds of photographers joining us anytime. Uh, feel free to up. Many of you have attended our webinars. We do these epic free webinars. We started it a few months ago, um, specifically because, you know what? We've been holding and directing these world-class um, epic photographic workshops that are by far the most epic workshops in the world with the photography workshop series for the last 11 years. And although they are spectacular and they're a great opportunity for photographers to maximize their potential, and take themselves all the way to the top of the industry. Um, the challenge is, is not all of you guys get to attend. Not all of you guys have been there. Uh, so what I want to make sure is that a lot of the information that we've shared over the years, um, it's kind of, you know, in the select elite group of photographers that have attended our workshops, uh, such as Terry, such as Veronica, and many others that are watching today. So what I would like to do and what I've been doing for the last like three months is I've been presenting a tremendous amount of free information for you guys about photography. We've held these epic webinars on um, marketing for photographers, um, which has been a really popular one. We held a couple of weeks ago when we had the, the great marketing expert, Humberto Garcia, um, who owns Photography to Profits. We've held webinars on what's hot for 2020. We've had them on what to do during the COVID pandemic, what to do to get ready. Um, for when everything opens and how to apply for assistance. We've had all kinds of webinars on um, portrait and wedding photography and kind of how to take yourself to the highest level of the consumer market and also how to take yourself to the highest level of the commercial market. Um, and then everything also about what we do and how we help photographers. Um, we edit through their portfolios. We mentor them. In fact, we even offer free photographic portfolio reviews, which is pretty fantastic. Because oftentimes, uh, there are a lot of amazing photographic consultants out there, um, and I know many of them personally. Um, and I know many of you guys have also probably gone to portfolio review sessions in New York or in LA. Um, but uh, you, know, you typically have to pay. You have to pay to, to get these amazing services, as you should. Um, but one of the things that I feel really strongly about is um, I want to review your work, and I want to also make sure to give you as much knowledge as I possibly can to help each and every one of you attending today making sure that you have all the tools and the techniques to maximize your photographic potential so that you can work as a professional photographer and make a lot of money doing it. Because it's important to me that you, if you're an artist and you're a photographer, I wanna make sure you're being successful. And if you're not being successful and you're not doing it, then it's really hard uh, to continue to pursue your dreams. And I'm all about pursuing your dreams and maximizing your photographic potential. It's absolutely key and critical to me that each and every one of you is maximizing your photographic potential. So it all starts right here and right now. And those of you guys who are attending, we're gonna go in depth about how to master your photographic portfolio, okay? And I want you to also um, feel free to go on our website at photographyworkshopseries.com forward slash webinars and, um, and make sure to also uh, review all the incredible webinars we've done over the last three months that are all free. Um, each one of them is about an hour and a half in length. 
And um, there's some really, really incredible resources. And after this webinar, I highly recommend that you also um, go back and watch all the prior ones if you haven't already. And I, I know I see a lot of familiar faces. Many of you guys have already watched about seven of them or so. Um, but I just think that um, it's a really fantastic opportunity um, to, uh, you know, to get a lot of free information that's out there uh, that a lot of other people are not doing. Um, so I'm putting the link in the chat here. Um, so, uh, and, and also, um, by the way, Zach, you posted, uh, post your questions here. Um, I, I would absolutely love for you guys to post comments and responses on the chat, but what I'm actually looking for, Zach, is um, I'm specifically looking for all of you guys to post your questions in the Q&A section. So please, in the Q&A, um, please make sure to post all of your questions there. That way um, we can answer them uh, one at a time and get through as many as possible. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's um, a whole section and you can see Q&A. And, uh, and then also um, uh, we're gonna set a series of polls uh, to, you know, to ask you some questions about what type of photography uh, that you do. So um, I'm actually gonna launch a poll right now and um, I, uh, I just shared it with you guys. So if you wanna please go ahead and answer um, what type of photography you do? Because I wanna know, um, you know, are you guys advertising photographers? Are you commercial photographers? Do you shoot fine art? Do you shoot corporate? Um, do you shoot weddings, portraiture, product photography, uh, travel, um, food and beverage? What is it that you guys photograph? Please go ahead and answer um, in, the, um, in the poll section. This is really helpful. And I'm also gonna share these results so everybody can see kind of what, where everyone is. Um, and, um, and that's pretty fantastic. So, and, and it looks like we have a, actually a huge amount of variety on this group here. Um, it looks like we have a tremendous amount of portrait and also travel photographers, which is fantastic. Um, we also have quite a few advertising photographers, wedding photographers. Um, okay, this is, this is excellent. This is helpful uh, for me to see. Um, so uh, now, um, you know, I'd like to go ahead and begin because it is uh, one o'clock. Welcome everyone to the Photography Workshop Series Master Your Portfolio free um, webinar on how we can take each and every one of you and maximize your photographic potential through developing a world-class portfolio. And I think that this is absolutely one of the most important facets to each and every one of you as a photographer is it's about the images. And if you don't have a world-class incredible portfolio, you don't really have anything to share with people. Okay, so it all starts there. It all starts with the backbone of your photographic business is going to be what you're going to be portraying to the world. Now, I get this question a lot. I'm like, um, you know what, Kevin? I don't really have a portfolio or I, um, I have a portfolio, but um, you know, I, I, uh, I haven't shared it with people yet. It's not online or I need to update it or whatever. I get this literally every day. People tell me this. Okay, and I understand that. And I understand each and every one of you guys are busy and stuff, but you know what? If your work is not out there, how can somebody book you? How can somebody know even who you are if your work is not up available online for everybody to see, okay? So the, one of the most critical factors is to get your work out there, okay? And I want it on your website. I want it on social media. I want it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I want it on um, all facets of social platforms. And I also want you to have a printed portfolio. Okay, so I know that sounds a little archaic. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, printed portfolios were big 20 years ago, but you know what? And I'm gonna ask Janice this as well, because she's a, 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 one of our panelists today who's a world-class, one of the top photography agents in New York, Janice Moses represents, and um, she represents some world-class top advertising photographers, um, people even way better than me. And I am really excited to have her on because she can also share some of her insight and her experiences and what she looks for in portfolios. Um, but I also want to know, you know, how important um, are these printed portfolios? Like for me, I still have them. I still have printed portfolios. And I share these um, with my clients when I meet with them in person. Now, personally, my photographic portfolio looks like this. It's 11 by 14. It's, it's printed on a brushed metal. Now, this one's seen a lot of abuses. I've <laughs> taken this portfolio all over the world with me. But it's all about, this is my lifestyle portfolio. Okay, so I'm going to be creating a series of a body of work that has high impact imagery that's going to completely pop off the page and get the client excited. But it's also presented in a way where it's on a printed metal portfolio. And you know, it's kind of funny, like I was actually um, at a meeting with Shia Day here in LA, 
and Shia Day, um, TBWA Shia Day is one of the top ad agencies in the world. And their a senior art producer there was reviewing my book. And she actually was like, she liked the images. She, she thought they were impactful and she liked me and everything. And it was a great meeting. But she was actually even more interested than me actually in my book. She was like, oh my goodness, where did you get this done? I want to print our agency books and showcase those um, for our presentations to our clients. Where did you get it done? I'd like, to, I'd like to find out. So if you guys are interested, our photographic consultants can share that with you. Um, but um, I personally love um, printing something like this. Um, they're generally a, a screw post bound. So what that means is that um, there are screw posts. I recommend two or three screw posts, meaning right in here. Um, and then having an image 11 by 14. Um, and I chose to have these as horizontal. Um, and I also have them in uh, pages that are like plastic pages. Now, not everybody loves plastic pages. I don't either. Um, but the beautiful thing about plastic pages is that it makes it really, really, really easy uh, to change out the images all the time. You know, so if I am going to have these images, I can essentially uh, whip out an image and I can place another one in right before another meeting. So I'm oftentimes constantly changing them in and out. Because I don't know what Janice does, but I know for me, I want to make sure to tailor my photographic portfolio exactly to the client that I'm going to meet. Okay. So if I'm going to meet with like a healthcare pharmaceutical client who's, you know, for instance, Pfizer or GlaxoSmithKline or something, I'm going to have a portfolio that only shows healthcare pharmaceutical, meaning happy, healthy people, having fun, enjoying life. They're outside, they're enjoying life, um, having different demographics, different age demographics, uh, older models, um, you know, representing the, you know, the, the mature models and the baby boomers and the elders, and then also child models and incorporating family scenes and creating dynamic images that completely pop off the page. And I create, for instance, for lifestyle, a, an air of like, okay, I feel like I'm almost inside of the image with the models. So that almost like they're your friends. So we're almost having an experience where the viewer feels like they're part of the scene. And I feel like when you have a printed portfolio, it's a really good way to do that because the best way to accompany your portfolio is gonna be for you to accompany it. Okay, not just send it off. I mean, this is years ago and Janice can kind of probably remember this, but years ago, a lot of times, uh, photographers would just drop their portfolios off. And they would have stacks of portfolios at, you know, Vanity Fair and stuff like that, or, you know, at big ad agencies as well, um, in Saatchi in New York and stuff like that. But these days, they don't really do that a whole lot. A lot of times, everything's done online. Um, and, but the thing is, is now it's just this, you know, simple to just click or not click. And a lot of times, they're getting inundated by thousands and thousands of photographers and get lost in a shuffle. So I recommend that you go and have FaceTime with that person. Just like right now, you and I, you guys are talking to me and viewing me right now. We're getting a sense of who we are based on visually how I'm talking to you. Visually, you can see me, you can kind of get what I'm all about. Well, you know what? I want you to do that as well because it's highly effective. When you're gonna go and you're gonna meet with a client, whether it's a commercial advertising client, a magazine, or even if you're dealing with um, a travel publication or a consumer client, a senior picture or a wedding, I would say it's even more important in that case because these are consumers and they're, you're, they're, they're gonna be parting with their money with somebody, they need to trust them right? So what's really important is that you need to accompany your portfolio, okay? So it's not just about the portfolio, it's also about you. You are a part of it. You are a brand in and of yourselves, okay? So I think that's absolutely key for you guys to understand what that means. And by the way, um, uh, the poll results here, uh, what type of photographic industry you guys currently in, um, it looks like a majority of you guys are actually in travel, and portrait, which is really awesome and interesting and welcome you guys. Um, it just so happens that we have some epic photographic uh, portfolio building workshops designed specifically for travel photographers, as well as portrait photographers, as well as commercial advertising and fashion. So um, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks guys um, for answering that. I, I really um, appreciate all of your responses and I recommend that you, or I, I really encourage you guys uh, to answer some of these questions. Um, so I'm also going to ask a question now. I want to know about, do you have a portfolio? Okay. Do you have a printed portfolio and a website? Do you have a website only? Do you showcase your images only on social media, which I mean, a lot of photographers that do that, they just have an Instagram page or something. Um, or you don't even have a portfolio yet, which is okay. It's totally okay. Um, we're here to help you develop that. Um, that's something that actually we're absolute specialists in. Um, so uh, I, I would love to hear from you guys and tell us your perspective about what you have. 
Um, now, I also want to get to something before I get to our panelists. I want to talk a little bit about um, different brands. And I, I think that this is absolutely critically important. I talk to a lot of photographers that shoot a lot of things. They're essentially a jack of all trades, master of none. Okay? Now, if you're a jack of all trades, master of none, and what I mean by that is that, okay, you're shooting on the same page. I'm show, seeing that you shoot portraiture and you shoot weddings, and then you photograph swimsuits and boudoir, and then you do a little bit of fashion, and then do some events. Okay, I see literally every single day I consult with photographers or my team consults with photographers that have this situation. And what I'm going to try to tell you guys is I don't care, even if you live in a rural area where you think that that's a good idea, please stop doing that. Please, please, you're killing your business, absolutely destroying your business. And let me tell you why. And I, I, I feel like this analogy works really well. I, you know, and, and Janice can probably attest to this, but like if you're dealing with, say, you know, a, a big client, um, say you're dealing with an ad agency who's representing um, a Pepsi, do you think Pepsi is gonna to wanna to hire a photographer that shoots lifestyle with beverage? Or do you think that they're gonna to wanna to shoot, uh, hire somebody that shoots newborns in boudoir? Right, so if, they, if you show them something, and, it, and, and I mean, not just that, but even something as similar as like, oh, they're Pepsi, but you're gonna show them fashion. You know, it doesn't make sense to them. They don't want the master, the jack of all trades. They want the master that does just what they're looking for. Same thing goes with weddings. If you're, I, I know I talked to so many wedding photographers and, you know, and they, they come in with these portfolios and they're trying, they're like, yeah, I only charge $2,000 a wedding. And I ask them their goal, what would it feel like if you were able to shoot $10,000 weddings or $15,000 weddings? Because I consult with a ton of photographers who do. And a lot of them say, oh, well, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to get those or I don't know how to book them. And then the, one of the first things I do is I look at their website and, and, and sure enough, they have wedding photography of just average looking people, which by the way, a $10,000 client is not going to be interested in seeing average looking Joes, you know, the, the overweight or the, the lesser attractive person or whatever. They're looking at bridal magazines every day, right? If you, if, and, and I want to make that clear. So if we are, um, you know, and this is something as simple as like, I'm going to go on uh, Google and I'm going to type in bridal magazines. Okay. And do you think that every bride in America is not going to read these? Literally every single one does. Every single bride is going to look at one of these magazines. Okay. So if they're going to look at images like these and they're going to see like top tier models in the, in the images, these are celebrities and world-class top models and supermodels. And then they're going to go back to looking at your work with like the average Joe down the street that's, you know, 300 pounds and um, maybe aging and balding. Do you think that they're more likely to book you or less likely to book you on their $15,000 wedding? I think it's really important to understand this. And I can't tell you, uh, every single wedding and portrait photographer on this, this webinar right now definitely does not refine the work enough. And I would say the same thing about the commercial photographers, the travel photographers. You guys have stuff all over the place. You know, if you're a travel photographer, what does that mean? Are you photographing for National Geographic? Or are you photographing for the resorts? You know, I think that it's important to understand what it is you're actually going for. Who you are as a photographer, right? And I have a lot of different brands. And that's why I want to explain this. So if you're going to look at me, and I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to be interested in my fashion clients. Uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, shoot for Zara, I'm gonna shoot for Levi's, or I'm going to shoot for a high-end brand or a big magazine. I've been publishing over 175 magazine editorials. So if I'm going to showcase my fashion work, then I'm going to show them this. This is my fashion body of work. Okay. And it's very specific. I'm looking for high-end fashion clients. I have some big editorials, some flaunt, some big stories, big time top models like Christina Scheiter, world-class top model from Germany. I've got some, you know, world-class, high-end, highly produced imagery with top-tier models. Most of these models have been in Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, and I'm telling stories with them. They're highly styled, they're highly produced, they're world-class production level, okay? The production level, the images, uh, the, the images, how the quality of your images have a lot to do with the production level, meaning how high-end is the, the, the production, how big is the budget, who the models are what the styling looks like, 
you know? Do you have styling like this with, you know, world-class stylist with a designer from Dubai and Huda Shreita from Harper's Bazaar, you know? Or did you go and try to style it yourself or did you ask your model to bring clothes? Well, that doesn't work. If you wanna shoot fashion, you've gotta have it styled properly, okay? And even if you're a wedding and portrait photographer, still your portfolio should reveal highly styled portraiture. 100% of the time. And if you say, oh, I just want to show my clients, don't do that. Show highly styled, world-class production portraiture if you want to get high-end clients. And don't show them the mediocre garbage that um, you're, you might be having to deal with in your local area. Show them world-class production. Because without it, it's a lot harder to justify the prices if you want to increase how much you're earning as a photographer. Because I want you to demand higher prices as a photographer without question. Okay, now that's my fashion body of work. So that has a certain look and feel, right? But the thing is, is that's not my bread and butter. Because I know in the, in the industry, the photographic industry right now, the big money is in advertising photography, specifically lifestyle. So for me, my bread and butter is this. And I wanna make sure that my lifestyle clients, when I shoot for Pepsi, I've shot campaigns for Smirnoff, Miller Lite, Coors Light. Um, I, I've shot major campaigns for uh, the Four Seasons, Ritz Carlton. I've done a lot of really great lifestyle campaigns, but I wanna show just my lifestyle work. I'm not gonna show them fashion. I'm not gonna show them swimsuit. I'm not gonna show them stuff that's unrelated. I'm gonna show them content that is gonna be related to, who, to, to them. Okay, and it's going to be very specific. So I'm not going to show that whole other body of work. It's hidden. And even though I have a lot of amazing fine artwork, I also have incredible travel. I, I also am the um, host, director, executive producer of the TV show Great Escapes that airs on NBC, and I direct this this travel show. Um, again, I'm not going to show that because it's a different it's a different entity unless it's specific to the client. You know, if it's something like Four Seasons, and yeah, I would. But if it's Pepsi or something, it's probably not relevant. They're looking for something that's very, very specific to their brand. And so specific that usually they want to see the models holding the beverage in the imagery. And not just any beverage, but their beverage. It's very specific, okay? So I'm gonna develop a body of work that's cohesive, meaning cohesion is all the images work together. They all work in conjunction. They kind of have a similar look, feel, and style. And that way, when a client sees it, they're not so scared to hire you because for them, they're, they're dealing with say a $200,000 budget. It's kind of scary because their job's on the line guys. And they want to make sure that if they're going to, they're going to hire you, you're going to follow through with a look, feel and style that's appropriate to them to specifically to their brand. Okay. Now I, um, I just posted a link here on the chat. I'd love for you guys all to click on it. I want you to set up a free, 30 minute photographic portfolio review with one of my team. Okay. So I have seven photographic consultants that are experts in reviewing portfolios and they're absolutely incredible human beings. And all of them are on this webinar right now. And I encourage you guys to go ahead and click that link so you can jump on and join them on a free 30 minute photographic consult to talk about your photographic portfolio, what it needs, um, what you can do to improve, um, maybe what your goals are. You know, what's next for you in your photographic journey, okay? And, um, and, and it doesn't matter if you have a website, um, if you have a social media page, even if you don't even have a portfolio yet, but you have maybe some imagery, um, that, like somewhere, you could share on Dropbox or email it, um, or even if um, you ha don't even have that yet, but you're looking to build a portfolio and you wanna talk to them about, okay, how can I build a photographic portfolio? What do I need? Okay, so please go ahead and click on that link. I encourage you guys and go ahead and set it up. It'll be actually a live Zoom um, meeting where you can meet personally and you can have a intensive 30-minute um, consult with our photographic consultants. And it goes a little longer than that, that's fine. But I just encourage you to do that because we're here to help you. We're here to consult you guys and discover, okay, what about your portfolio is working? What about your portfolio could improve? And how we can take your photographic career to the next level to maximize everything about what you do as a photographic professional. So please go ahead and click that. I'd really appreciate it. And I'd love to also meet you guys on some of these as well. So um, you can schedule them, I think, over the next five days. Um, please go ahead and do that. We're, we're offering that right now. Okay, so um, since we have such an incredible uh, tier of panelists here, um, I wanna introduce them. 
and I'd love for you guys to hear from them as well. So I'm gonna, um, I, you know, first of all, we have uh, Terry Moy. Terry Moy is a world-class uh, photographer who shoots high-end advertising photography. Um, and she um, uh, came to a couple of our workshops uh, over the last year. I believe, Terry, you came to New York, uh, our New York fashion workshop to develop um, just absolutely stunning images. And then also, I believe you came to Dallas. Um, and then uh, Ver Veronica Yankowski, um, she is a absolutely um, brilliant photographer, which, um, you know, if you, I'm going to showcase her work in a little bit here, but um, I know that we've featured her images on our website on photographyworkshopseries.com, um, showcasing her incredible editorial covers uh, that we've shot, that were shot uh, during our New York workshop that I'm super, super proud of. So you can take a look here, uh, Veronica, I believe you shot this cover and this whole editorial um, absolutely stunning. This was a, during our New York fashion photography workshop, shot on location at a castle designed to be identical to King Henry VIII's palace from the 1500s in Long Island. And um, it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'm super proud of the imagery that you guys have, have created. And, uh, and when I get to you, I'm gonna talk to you guys about uh, what that portfolio means to you and how those images have kind of helped you in your photographic career. Um, but, but first, before that, I'd love for you guys to, um, to meet our wonderful established panelist, Janice Moses. Um, she is a top tier uh, photography agent. She's been in it for, I don't know, 30 years. Um, she reps some of the biggest commercial photographers um, in New York. And um, I am absolutely honored to have you on because um, you are a really big deal in the industry, even though I know she's very modest. Um, but uh, I don't let her fool you. She is a, a, a juggernaut in the photographic industry. <laughs> So, um, I, uh, I, I want to share um, uh, her with you, and, and first of all, I'm going to share my screen to showcase uh, who she is, or who the, the artists are that she represents. Um, so uh, she represents some top-tier photographers shooting major campaigns, um, and uh, she's located uh, in New York. So anyway, um, uh, Janice, I'd love to give you the floor, and, and really all I want to know, Janice, is why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? and about um, what you look for in a photographer's portfolio. Like say, what you look for as far as uh, what made the photographers you chose to represent, uh, what made you choose them to represent? And then also like, what about their portfolios do you really emphasize to the clients uh, that you communicate with to book big, big opportunities? Well, you know, before I um, can answer those questions, I just want to say to you, um, first of all, thank you for inviting me to join you here today. Um, I think what you're doing is incredible. Um, we met 10 years ago. Uh, you were a young photographer. And as I said to you yesterday, you have grown so much exponentially. I mean, and just listening to you today, I, I think that you are offering up some incredible incredible advice and guidance and support to the uh, to the photographers who are listening to you and kudos to you Kevin I mean really this is a spectacular setting for any photographer who's hungry for um, collaboration and input and uh, an opportunity to brainstorm so thank you so much for uh, sharing today with me um, now you asked me a very hard question uh, and it's it's hard because, um, you know, I'm very intuitive in nature and um, as, a, as a photo editor trained by um, graduates of uh, Art Center College of Art and Design um, and raised under the uh, umbrella of, of Hugh Hefner, who was a phenomenal magazine editor, you know, it, it kind of shaped the way I think. And um, so in talking about portfolios, you know, uh, first of all, I'm always looking for the vision. I I'm looking for what is the vision of the talent that I'm seeing and, and does it relate to me and what I do on a daily basis? Um, you know, I, I, over my career, I, I've done, and especially in recent years, like the last 10 years, I've done a lot of pharmaceutical advertising with um, real people, you know, authentic emotion. So in today's world, when I look at a book, um, I'm looking for those ingredients. I'm looking for the authentic emotion, how it's captured. But I'm also, of course, always looking for the taste, the style, the production. You know, I know that 
with the photographer, the buck stops there. You know, he's got to assign the stuff. Stylist. He's got to uh, uh, work with the hair and makeup. He's the last word on uh, on the talent. Uh, certainly, the clients uh, have a lot of inf influence in selecting the models that are chosen, especially for advertising campaigns, because the clients have brand images and they want to, you know, they want to select. But but the it, it, like it's like everything you said. It's who the models are what the wardrobe is, what the location is, what the logistics of the production is. It, it all has to be present in those few final images because you know you might have spent 12 hours shooting those pictures and three days producing those pictures, but there's only that one picture sitting there. And in a quick New York minute, pardon the expression, um, I have to, take all that in and and so everything that's on that page the model the wardrobe the light the moment the feeling the message it, it all has to come across at me and, and i'm looking for that you know that's that's picture by picture um as a portfolio <laughs> and, you know pairing pictures uh, must be an art because it's it's so difficult to do. So often, uh, photographers will put two pictures together that I don't think work together, and they always tell me it's because they're they, they have the most difficulty editing their own books. You know, which is why a second pair of eyes, whether it's a consultant, uh, another photo editor, uh, you know, maybe even you know their assistant can help them to see the picture. I mean, I use a simple formula for a book and I just call it yin yang. You know, the two pictures should live side by side and they should charge each other. It's just like when you walk into a museum or a gallery, pictures are hung in a way so that they charge each other by their, by their content, by their volume, by their colors. Uh, I, you know, I think that's, that's really important. And, and a book in itself should have a flow. You know, the start of the book should be, uh, and maybe this comes from my magazine orientation, but I don't think so. You know, the start of the book should be the hero image, whether it's the cover of the magazine or the cover of the catalog or the cover of your portfolio. It's got to be the establishing picture. Like you just showed a really beautiful picture of um, one of your photographers. I mean, both of the talent that you have here today are exceptional, exceptional photographers. I'm... I'm you know, really thrilled to be sitting on a panel with them. So, you know, if you don't print on the cover like you did with your fabulously beautiful steel book, you open up and there's that first picture which is establishes who you are and what I can expect to see. And as the pages turn in the book, um, it's the content and the flow and the colors and the emotion um, and, and I don't think it matters whether it's fashion or lifestyle or portraits. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it is really, it's all very much the same. Uh, in the end, the pictures have to speak about what it is we're going to look at and how uh, it all flows together and what the message is of the photographer. You know, what does he shoot? What does he love to shoot? What is he good at? Uh, what is the moment? What is the feeling? Um, and, and the book has to be filled with that in a way that lyrically uh, uh, displays and showcases that vision, that taste, that style, that point of view, uh, you know, to a closer. Um, and, um, and, I, and I also think that the way a book is laid out, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Full Bleed, and yet sometimes, a, a picture needs space around it. It needs white space around it for the eye to rest so that, you know, you get uh, that trigger of moving from one point of view to something else that's quite spectacular. Uh, you know, I love these pictures. Stuart McClymont is a phenomenal um, London-based portrait photographer who shoots for the, um, the Sunday Times. He does their covers very, very often. And there's a, I mean, one of the things about Stuart that's so incredible is he, he is so versatile. He's so adept at lighting and range. 
he, yes, he can do a series and do a hundred pictures all, all the same, which become a campaign, like this recent one that he did for the British Foreign Legion. But he can also, every single shoot, do some unbelievably surprising image. Um, I, I just want to move this, you know, of, of uh, and I, I think the other thing he does is he can work with all types of people from uh, the guy who started Brexit to the head of parliament to, you know, uh, one of the most famous actresses in the world. Um, and he can get them to do something in front of his camera that is unexpected and surprising. You know, there's something I want to say about why I love, um, I've always loved photographers because I think that they, they have an energy and a curiosity and a, um, a driving force to always learn and do something new. And, and the best of them, or the ones I've loved the most, I think, um, always take me somewhere I couldn't go on my own. Um, they take me places I, I wouldn't have an opportunity to see or experience if it weren't for them. And that's, that is really the value in all of this. Um, that you, you photographers bring we viewers uh, to this place through the magic of what you do. Um, and it's very special. You know, uh, I spent a lot of my early years, um, I started out as a stylist doing props and wardrobe and building sets, doing a little bit of hair and makeup. I even loaded film once. Uh, I'd never do that again. I, was, I didn't sleep all night till the film came back. Um, and, and I've been on set uh, for years. And I think that the magic that happens on a photo shoot is something I have always admired and, and cherished the experiences. I, I think that uh, what you guys do, um, it, it's magic. It's magical. And um, in the best of moments, um there's nothing like it I, you know i think that's why i never tire of this business and i never tire of having to learn and reinvent and keep up and define uh these challenges never go away and i've been doing this uh since i was a teenager um i started looking at vogue magazine when i was four years old my mother had it on the table and i grew up to love um, hair and makeup and styling and wardrobe. I never got to work for Vogue. Uh, I got turned away at Vanity Fair. Um, but I got to work at an incredible magazine where um, I, I learned what I do. I didn't get to go to school. So, you know, it's, it's been on the job training from the beginning. And um, um, I, I just, uh, I, I hope I've had something to say that would help um, a photographer uh, create a portfolio. I, I, you know, I think you're exactly right. The book has to define who you are. It has to have your signature on it from the cover to the pages. Uh, no, I don't like those acetate pages, but I do admit that you can change the pictures. And like you, Kevin, I was always changing the pagination of the book every time I went to a meeting. Um, you know, again, it goes back to my years um, as a magazine editor. Pagination can be everything. Pagination can make or break an experience with a book. How it flows, what the colors are, uh, is really very, very important, and it deserves time. I looked at a book recently, and the first three spreads just could be thrown off the table. But by the time I got to the fourth spread, that was the beginning of the book. And from there on, it flowed right through to the end. And it was spectacular. And I said, this is where your book begins. You need to drop those pages off or throw them in the back or throw them out. Um, you know, because uh, I, 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 that's, flow is so important. It, it's like editing a, a film. I mean, it, a flow can make or break the experience for the viewer. And it is the viewer, the client, the art producer that, uh, you want to capture their attention and make them take that book to the next level to get the approval so that you can get the job. So that's what I have to say.
Excellent. I love it, Janice. Um, so we have a few questions from the audience here. Um, they were all, they were asking, um, uh, Liam uh, Strain says, um, how do you go about deciding uh, what photographer to represent? Like, how did you choose the photographers that you have currently in your roster? Well, I'm a people person. And for me, me, it's really important that I um, connect with that person. You know, I, I have to love the work, that's for sure. Starts there. Um, uh, I mean, for example, I, you know, recently I was introduced to an artist and I, I love their work, but I said to myself, I can't represent you unless I meet you. And they weren't coming to America they were in Amsterdam and I said, okay, I, I, I have got to go. I have got to go and meet this person before I can introduce them to all my clients. So things fell into place. I got on an airplane. I went over there. We spent, we started talking at 1030 in the morning and at 530 in the afternoon, we were still talking. And when I finished the conversation, I said, I would love to represent you. And I came back and immediately landed them work, um, multiple jobs actually. I, I mean, I had the same thing happen a few years ago with a photographer who came to me. And, and within, uh, I don't know, 20 months, we did some 40 jobs together because I really loved his work and I really liked him and, and we resonated. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a boutique. There are some agents, you and I talked about this, who rep, 30, 40, 100 people. And for them, it's a matter of, of um, it's just a different approach. I prefer, you know, as much as I'm a rep, and I think that the term rep means sales rep, um, because a rep gets bookings. Um, I'm more of a manager because I'm involved in every aspect, whether it's uh, the sales, um, the constructing of the estimates, the negotiating, the setting the prices, the closing the deals, the developing a marketing strategy, the, um, you know, uh, figuring out the marketing. Um, I, I mean, I, like, I think I'm more of a, of a manager than just an agent or, or more of an agent than just a rep. Um, so I don't know. Does that answer? Absolutely. I, I, you know, I told you yesterday, I told you yesterday, here I am, I really had this great long conversation with you, and I look back on who you were 10 years ago, and I think that you were just, um, you were larger than life uh, when you came to see me at the Le Book Show. I'll never forget that. And you were so sweet and so nice and so genuine wanting to show your work, and you were doing some things that I just didn't feel I could sell, you know, because you were really going in the fashion direction, and I was really going in the, uh, the, not even the lifestyle at the, at, the, at the glamorous level, not the Pepsis. I was doing all the pharmaceutical work. And that is all about real people, real people casting, um, genuine, authentic, real wardrobe, real places. You know, it, it is, it, it, it's kind of like, I don't know, the, the heartbeat of the country. It's not all the most glamorous work. It is the most authentic, genuine photography that's going on today. It's not easy to do. None of this is easy to do. Uh, I don't want to minimize it. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And, and that's why I do like to accompany my portfolio. And, you know, and whenever I go, uh, you know, if I have a shoot in New York or I, have a shoot, I live in Los Angeles, but if I have a shoot in New York or Miami or Chicago, or whatever, I do everything I can to go and meet with the photography agents, even if I'm represented or not. Um, it, I meet with ad agency, art producers and creative directors. I meet with magazines. I try to set up, you know, 10 meetings if I can, if I have the time. And I try to just meet as many people as possible because that way my network grows and opportunities abound. And, I love your energy. I think you have, you're an enormously talented, energetic uh, person. And I, I mean, I love what you're doing here. I think it's really helpful to a lot of people. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and, um, and you know what, I, I've been fortunate enough to, um, you know, to, to work with uh, uh, thousands of photographers over the years and I've been able to um, develop their photographic portfolios. Um, by them attending these world-class epic photographic workshop experiences where they can literally shoot 
the greatest images they've ever shot in their career, guaranteed. And that's a bold statement, but it's because we've had so much success over so many years. Um, and I'm really proud of what our photographers, like our other panelists that have, that have come, about, come um, on here from Veronica Jankowski and, um, uh, and Terry Moy. But these are just images shot during our workshop. This was our last workshop. We shot, it got published in um, a Barcelona-based magazine, Photo Nostrum. And um, these are all um, epic imagery, all shot by our attendees. I believe five of our photographers got published here um, from the workshop. So, uh, so by the way, guys, I just put a poll up. If you guys are interested in, in getting involved in any of these world-class photographic portfolio building experiences, um, please go ahead and uh, answer um, on the poll section here, which ones you're most interested in, because we have, most of them are sold out for 2020. So we're booking up for 2021, but there are a couple spots open if you guys do want to attend. Um, but uh, we have some really exceptional experiences um, coming up and we have them all over the country. We have them in um, uh, Los Angeles, Newport Beach, Chicago, New York, Napa Valley, Miami, Denver. Um, and we also do them in Atlanta and Dallas, um, Orange County, um, San Diego, et cetera. So um, if you guys are interested, please um, uh, answer that um, on the poll here. And also, um, if you guys uh, uh, wouldn't mind um, also answering, um, I'd love to know uh, if you are interested in taking your photographic workshop, or, you know, photographic um, career to the next level, go ahead and answer this poll, which is about the likeliness of how likely would you attend a photographic workshop um, that to take your photographic portfolio to the next level. Um, you know, many of our photographers end up doubling, tripling, even quadrupling how much they're earning in a year after a workshop because of not only do they massively increase the quality of their photographic portfolio um, with world-class top models and styling and production, but they're also able to essentially um, uh, learn all the aspects of producing a massive scale shoot, obtaining representation from an agent, um, being able to connect with our producers, creative directors, and be able to also uh, negotiate usage fees, creative fees, how to maximize uh, their portfolio, develop this cohesive high-end portfolio, and then take their photographic career uh, to the next level. So um, if you guys are interested, um, please answer that. Let us know what you, what you think. We're very interested to know. And if you guys are also curious about the workshops, please don't hesitate to contact us um, because they are world-class experiences. And just like you know, Janice was mentioning about a few of these images that she just fell in love with, this is coming from a top New York agent. And these images, uh, many of them that she's commenting on, were shot at these epic workshops, uh, which I'm very proud of that we can produce such high quality productions and give you as a photographer, even if you're living in a rural area, say you're living in Alabama or Wisconsin or something like that, and you don't have access to supermodels and top tier productions, um, we're able to create those productions for you, whether it's lifestyle, uh, whether it's high end fashion, whether it's swim, uh, whether it's portraiture and weddings, um, we have workshops on all these different types of, um, of uh, opportunities for you. Um, so uh, yeah, so please you know, uh, go ahead and check that out. Um, and also in the, um, you know, in the chat, I also encourage you guys um, to uh, set up a portfolio review because we can also review your book and go over that and find out, discover what you need. Um, so, um, and also, by the way, um, you might have seen this one, Janice. This one might ring a bell. This is my oldest portfolio. This is from 10 years ago, but I still have it. And um, this portfolio um, is, uh, it's a blue suede portfolio. I don't know if you remember this, but it's made out of blue suede. It's handmade by a bookbinder. So this is another example of a photographic portfolio. It has my name embossed on the front. Um, this one is approximately um, maybe 10. It's kind of a weird size. It's like 10 by 16 or something like that. I wouldn't recommend that. I like 11 by 14. Um, but it also uh, isn't full bleed. So Janice mentioned she likes full bleed. I agree with you, Janice. I think that I, I wouldn't do this again, or I haven't done it again in 10 years uh, where it wasn't full bleed. Although this is a nice high quality watercolor paper. I take it, took a Goody adhesive, a double-sided Goody adhesive and adhesed the images uh, to it. And you had mentioned when we talked the other day about this image that um, kind of stood out to you. Um, it was kind of a Mad Men vintage story. Um, but highly produced, highly art directed. And um, in 10 years ago, this was really hot when like Mad Men was um, first starting and it was a really hot, hot TV show. Um, but you know, it, there's a lot of flow to this. You know, there's a flow to this. There's a cohesion to this book, right? Now, for someone like Janice, it wasn't right because she wasn't representing fashion photographers. And that was my mistake. 
right? I should have been meeting only with agents that represent fashion photographers and also magazines and, um, and brands and stuff like that. And since then, remember, like I've learned a lot and grown a lot. And I know that like, listen, if you're going to meet with a decision maker or an agent like Janice who represents advertising photographers, I have to show her something that gets her excited, something that she could sell, that she could market to her audience. And okay. I understand that now. And I've developed a whole different series of brands that I can showcase. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing. I also own production companies for television productions and broadcasts and digital commercials. Those are completely different brands. And I have those on different websites, different brands, and I market them separately. Um, but you as photographers, I want to make sure that you are dialing in the most incredible brand specific to your clients. Okay. Absolutely key. So Janice, um, with, uh, um, I mean, you can, you can tell me, uh, you know, what your thoughts are, but just a quick little thing about representation, because we have an agent on, um, I know personally what's worked really well for me and I've had four different agents in my career. Um, and, um, is that to obtain representation, oftentimes agents are not just looking about, um, how great a photographer is, but also how, not only how well they can market to them with their uh, market to their client, to great clients that you're going after their portfolio but also what do they bring to the table? Now, for instance, for me, I package myself as a brand in and of myself. I can, I can, I'm a TV host and director. I'm featured on uh, an NBC TV show. I also photograph and I also shoot video. So I'm branding that and packaging that together. But most importantly, when I approach an agent, I approach them with opportunity. I approach them and say, it's not only just about my photographic portfolio, I also am bidding on X, Y, and Z ad campaigns. What do you think would be a good usage and creative fee for me to include. And so instead of just coming in like, hey, hey, you know, look at my work, you wanna represent me, I come into the, you know, I come into the picture and I'm like, you know what? I actually am bidding on these ad campaigns, L literally I am right now, and I want your opinion, Janice, on how I should um, price the usage and the creative fees into the budget. Do you feel like that's something that, you know, would help as far as when you bring on a photographer, would that kind of help the decision-making process? I, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Are you, are you asking me uh, if a photographer comes to me with work and existing contracts and he wants my opinion on his fees, would that help me to uh, feel a, a closer relationship with him? Well, yeah, in my experience, I mean, I've had a lot of, that's essentially how I've obtained uh, my relationships with my agents is that you know, they're typically looking to work with photographers that are working, you know, that have opportunities coming in. Um, does that help you or is it more, for you, is it more about their work and what you see in their portfolio and how you can market for me, it's always, for me, it's, it, for me, it's always been about their work. I have to love, I have to love the work. I mean, I took on somebody a few years ago uh, because I loved the work and I felt that some of the things that I really value, he did well very well. And because of that, when I sit down in a meeting, I can say to the viewer, I can say, look at this, look at how he approaches this. This is phenomenal work. You're going to get incredible results out of this man. You know, he not only shoots wonderful moments, he shoots men very well. He shoots women very well. He shoots landscapes very well. His light is so beautiful. He has taste. These are the things that matter the most because I'm not just servicing his clients where he's already got bookings. I'm bringing him new business. And so sure, I would like to know that he's got business coming in because I take a percentage of house accounts at the start. And I, I always like to earn my living. I'm not just looking to take on people who have established business so that I get a you know, a fixed income. I, I, you know, I can only speak for myself. I don't know. Um, I've never been the best at representing myself. I think I do a better job of representing my people. Um, but I think that for me, I have to love the work. I have to love the work because I have to sell the work and I have to know the person because I have to talk about the person. So, you know, those are the things that matter the most to me. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I, I'd, I'd love it if he has business that would you know it certainly takes the pressure off a little bit uh you you're know like I, a dream agent by the way janice that's like the uh, the answer that most photographers would absolutely love to hear the fact that it's all about the work i love that answer i don't know i mean you know we're in an exceptional moment now with this post covid 19 and i don't even know if i can say post uh you listen to the news and don't know just exactly what's ahead and so 
we're all trying to figure out how to create in place. You know, there are companies that are in, in, inspiring you to learn to create in place. Um, I got a phone call um, six weeks ago in the middle of, you know, the worst of moments, actually from two different art producers saying, do you have stock that I could buy because I have a client with needs? And I turned to my photographers and I said, you know, they want stock. We don't have these stock. Are you up for uh, producing something on your own? And I will be here to collaborate with you. Both of them said yes. Both of them went into their, you know, resources of talent, locations. Uh, models had to do their own hair and makeup, had to bring their own wardrobe because there was absolutely no way with social distancing we could put anybody in the room. And um, one of them, on a Sunday afternoon, there we were. He was like, what do you think about the models, the wardrobe, the location, the this, the that. And we collaborated. And at the end of the day, he did a great job. The client loved it. We sold it. The models made some money. He and I made some very nice money. And, um, you know, we figured out how to create in place. So now we are working on how to be sure because, you know, while we're getting white papers on what's possible uh, in this post, in this initial post COVID-19 time, where social distancing and keeping the place clean and having everybody behave in a certain way is going to be very, very important. I think that photographers being resourceful independently is going to be very important as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, so uh, we have a good question from Mubarak, uh, who says, how many photos are required in a printed portfolio? Uh, I would say max, max is 40 pages, and it depends on your, it depends on your picture selection and your layout. I mean, you could have one picture that's a double page spread. You could have one spread that's three quarters spread with a detail in the lower corner. You could have two pictures that are a spread. So, you know, max, max 40 pages and however it fits together, 60, 80 pictures at the most. Could be less, depends on, depends on what you shoot. You know, I don't want to see 60 portraits, uh, a portrait book that's all heads. You know, you look at Martin Scholler, Randall Ford, Stuart McClymont, um, it's so, I mean, Martin Scholler's book is probably 80 pages of all these different faces in the same light on the same white background. But yet each face is like a, they're so damn brilliant by what they look like that, you know, where Stuart is some on red, some on black, some black, some white. I mean, it's like, you know, so there, it, it, it has to feel right. You, you know, you're telling a story about what you do and it has to feel right so i i agree with janice i think that um you know to me kind of rule of thumb is 30 to 40 uh i think it's strong um and uh i i think that um but it it, it has to flow i think that what she mentioned the pagination um and the flow and the portfolio cohesion meaning that you don't want it all over the place it needs to have a cohesive feel um, so that it all kind of works in conjunction together so make sure guys if you guys are interested in doing a photographic consult Go ahead and click that link in the um, uh, in the um, uh, chat there to to set up one up, and we can talk about that. Uh, we can talk specifically about how to do that um, with you. So, um, all right. Uh, so let let me ask a couple more questions, and then we'll move on to our other panelists. Um, this is absolutely brilliant, Janice, and I really am so excited um, uh, that you're you're talking. I can't believe you put me on the spot like this. Oh, you're wonderful. You're absolutely, you're yeah, absolutely. That's exciting. Oh, this is, these, are, <laughs> these are wonderful and easy questions. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, we had a lot of questions about genres. What do photographers do if they have, like, if they shoot a whole bunch of genres? Um, what do you think they should do? What's your guidance for them? Can you be more specific? What do you mean? Uh, so like I mentioned earlier about how uh, it's not good to be like a jack of all trades and just have a million different genres on a website. Um, exactly. Do you have any suggestions for what a photographer do? Say they, they shoot, you know, six different types of photography that are completely different from each other. What do you suggest? Focus. Focus. Find, find what you love and what you do best. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be a commercial photographer and you're going to, I mean, you know, it, it really depends 
Um, I should, I, it really depends on where you are, what market you're in. You know, if you're in um, Nebraska and some of your clients are farm machinery and some of your clients are banks, uh, you're going to have to shoot farm machinery with farmers and you're going to have to shoot office workers uh, at their desk. And maybe you're gonna have to shoot the portrait of the guy who owns the pizza place down the street. So, you know, that's, that's that regional, uh, that's that regional photographer. Uh, if you're in New York, I, I think you're gonna have to focus if you're gonna shoot, I mean, maybe you could shoot still life and people. I, I don't, you know, long, long ago, it was said that's not a good idea. So, I, but I think that a photographer has to do what he's most passionate about. And hopefully it's what the customers are buying. And if it's not what they're buying, then he's got to figure out what they need and what they're going to buy, especially if he wants to make a living at it and, and shoot that if that resonates with his heart. I love it. I love it. Sounds wonderful, Janice. Well, thank you so much because you've had some incredible insight and you're an absolute brilliant um, person to bring aboard. Um, so, uh, you know, and if you guys um, uh, want to follow Janice, um, you can look at her up on, um, on her website that we just uh, showcased. Um, so you can look her up. It's JaniceMoses.com. Um, Janice Moses um, represents as her company. And um, she is a world-class top uh, New York agent. So I'm so, so grateful and thankful that you came aboard today. Um, and, um, and thank you, Janice. And we're going to um, jump on to our next panelist, because Veronica Yankowski, that, the wonderful photographer that we were just talking about, um, with that incredible work um, with, um, uh, in front of the castle, uh, we're going to start um, talking with her. But thank you so much, Janice. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. May I listen in? Absolutely, 100%. Um, all thank right. Um, so, oh, you. oh, you're, you're wonderful. So, um, all right. So, uh, let me, um, uh, grab, um, uh, Veronica, um, and, uh, and talk with her about essentially what, and, and, you know, and, 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 when, and before I get to that guys, um, I know many of you guys have scheduled some consults, um, with our, um, uh, photographic consultants and thank you so much. Um, and I'm, I'm thank you also for um, uh, joining the polls and uh, answering a lot of those great questions. Um, we also, uh, I wanted to um, show you guys uh, a little bit about what we do. And for instance, the workshop that Veronica Yankowski um, attended. Um, and Veronica, which workshops did you come to? Uh, I did the one in New York. You did New York, okay, great. Yep. So she only did one. She did um, the New York workshop, this one. Um, and uh, in, in Veronica, you work with those world-class top stylists. I know we had a model, a model from Vogue, I think Ginger. Um, Ginger, yep. Yep. Um, it's uh, Yana Punaskaya, I think her, is yep. her, her Russian name. Um, and we actually have another one coming up this September uh, in, uh, in uh, New York. And uh, the first two days will be in Brooklyn at a studio, a high-end studio. And then the next two days will be on location at an epic location in Long Island. Um, so uh, I'm really, really excited about what we have coming up, and um, I, uh, I want to um, uh, showcase to you guys uh, kind of what the work looks like that you can expect to create at that workshop. Uh, so, um, all right. And uh, we have this incredible stuff here. This is all from this editorial. So this was in Vintage New York City Magazine. Is that right, Veronica? Correct. Yep. And absolutely breathtaking. And what I love about this, Veronica, is that your work is, um, it's very timeless. It's timeless, it's classic, and it also has like a really strong sense of style and art direction. Um, I love the, the movement and the feeling and the emotion. I love the wardrobe, I love the models, I love the location, and I also love the way you framed it. So, um, you know, you, you have some beautiful double page spreads, you have some single page spreads, you've got the cover with enough space on top for um, the topography. Um, and I thought that this was a really incredible uh, editorial. And I'm so proud of you, Veronica, because this was, this was really spectacular. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm just mesmerized. And when she sent me over uh, this, this published story, I was just like so, so, so excited because I was like, oh my goodness. You know? And what's great is every workshop that we've done over the last seven years has been published in a nationally published magazine. So um, this workshop alone, multiple photographers got published. And, um, 
we even at the, the last masterclass, our photographer Adam Friedman won the One Island Award for Top Fashion Photographer of the Year, uh, Top Ten uh -huh. Fashion Photographer of the Year, which is really exciting um, to to see what um, you know what they can what we can create. So if you guys are interested and want to get involved, um, I believe the New York workshop um, and uh, the Chicago and the Newport Beach workshop have about like, one spot to two spots left in each. They're almost sold out. So if you guys do want to attend, um, we are offering a special $500 discount for anyone um, that wants to enroll in those specific workshops. And if you've already enrolled in a workshop, we'll give it even a bigger discount off of adding a second workshop. Um, you can actually um, uh, have a, an $800 discount off of um, enrolling in a workshop. So if you guys are interested, we have a special um, discount link right here only for you guys attending this webinar. And you can go ahead and click that link and go ahead and enroll with just a $500 deposit and you can set up an installment plan uh, with somebody on our team. So um, if you guys are interested, go ahead and click that. Um, and you can create, and we can guarantee you guys are gonna create the greatest images you've ever shot in your life. And I can tell you that because the level of styling, the quality of the models, the quality of the production, and being able to work alongside me and my world-class team with on a massive scale set and photographing a, you know, commanding a set uh, equivalent of a 60 to $100,000 a day production. So that's why it's really exciting. So Veronica, um, I would love for you uh, to tell me a little bit about um, uh, how the images from the photographic workshop you shot in New York, how have those uh, benefited your career? Sure. So what was really terrific about your workshop, um, other than the amazing set and styling, and I can't even stress, um, now it's been almost two years since I've taken that workshop, but how uh, much of a difference it makes when you're dealing with uh, amazing professionals who are experienced um, and they know what they're doing. It is just, it just is going to take your work to such a different level. Um, but what happened at your workshop was I made those connections and I did what so many people failed to do was I followed up with them and I stayed in touch because when you go down the road of fashion and editorial and advertising, the photographer is in charge of having their own team. So you need to have your stylist, your hair and makeup artist, your videographer, um, everybody has to be in your back pocket. So you have to be ready to call on them uh, when you have a shoot. And that team is essential and they trust you, you trust them. And without that, you're nothing. So I can't even stress how important that is. Actually, the funny thing was I had a shoot and my uh, hair and makeup artist got sick and couldn't make it. So I reached out to uh, a hair and makeup artist that I met on this particular set. She was busy, but got me a friend of hers to come and cover me. And if you know anything about uh, doing fashion and editorial work, you better have a plan A, B, and C because something always goes wrong and you take the hit. So it's your responsibility when it does. So you have to be prepared to work in that kind of hectic environment and work on your feet. Like it's nobody's business and prepare that, you know, you have to think really quickly and everybody is going to work off of your vibe. So if you are stressed, if you're worried, that's not gonna look good to you in front of the models, designer, stylist, it's gonna fall apart. So your confidence uh, in being able to knock this out of the park is what's gonna keep everybody cohesive. And that's super important to learn and get really good at. And I'm just lucky because I've been uh, a professional photographer for 25 years. Um, only the past 13 have been an event and portraiture work, but I started as a photojournalist. So that's where my training of working quickly, uh, not knowing what's going to happen next. Like that was my early part of my career. So that's kind of filtered into my um, work today. But um, I made some great connections there. And um, Kevin had a magazine editor, Vaughn, uh, from Cool America. And there was something about chatting with him. He and I just hit it off immediately uh, from day one. And we, to this day, have the most amazing friendship. And he kind of took me under his wing and, and has been mentoring me for the past two years so I've gotten a ton of editorials and opportunities from working with Vaughn because he's so well connected uh, here in New York. And that's what you need. You need to start making those connections. Um, you know, and for me, I, I just need the opportunity. I don't have all of those designer connections yet. Um, so he trusts me to bring me, um, to put me on some of the biggest, you know, named uh, shoots he has. And he trusts me that you know, I'm going to pull it out for him and do a really great job and, and make his magazine look good and represent him well. 
Um, and that's what he did with me last year when we were having a huge shoot with Joseph Abood. And not only did I have to go and interview Mr. Abood himself, because I do do writing as well, but I had to take his portrait and then do a complete editorial um, a few weeks later. So um, if you don't know Joseph Abood, he is a uh, very famous uh, men's designer. So to be with him one-on-one -on -one and work with him and photograph him, that was the first thing I had to do. Um, you know, if you think that's going to make you nervous, that's just the beginning. But uh, we've developed such a great friendship since, and we've stayed in touch, and I've done some other work with him since. And it's all about keeping in touch and making those connections. And connection one started from Kevin's workshop. And then it was my job uh, to continue on throughout all of that. So that's just, I mean, I can't even say how priceless that was. It's been fantastic. That's amazing. So Veronica, have you been able to increase your prices at all or earn more money um, with some of those images? Has that helped you at all? Yes, a little bit. So I'm kind of like Kevin, whereas I do a lot of different things, but I have different brands. So my fashion brand has its own website, its own Instagram, its own everything. It has nothing to do with my portrait and event work. Uh, because when you're dealing with editorials and fashion, they don't really care that you shoot weddings and boudoir. They don't want to know any of that. So that's completely separate um, from anything else. And that's just, you know, the way it goes. Um, my mother company, if you will, Vera Luce Photography is the all encompassing, you know, mother load of everything. So I can share a little bit of everything that I do on there because my event clients and portrait clients, they want to know that I have uh, hair and makeup artists that have worked with top models. They would like to know that I just got this great fashion shoot in New York City. Um, I shot a fashion editorial in Iceland. I just did one in Miami and I was a creative director on that. And that job is no joke. It's really hard. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's really, really hard to do. Um, so they like knowing that I have all of that experience. So yes, when it comes to event photography, I raised my price over a thousand dollars. Awesome. Awesome. Without problem. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So it sounds like it's, it's helped you on a lot of different levels. So that, that's fantastic. And I'm glad Absolutely. that also you met all these networking connections like Cool America Magazine, like big time uh, stylists and stuff. And that, that alone just kind of grab it, just gives you that gravitas going forward because now you have those relationships, those connections. It's crazy. Yeah. And you know, for me, I just want the opportunity. So when, when you start to know people and they trust you, they're going to give you the jobs that you can dream to have. We had a situation last summer Whereas I had to photograph uh, an up and coming uh, musical artist who was just signed with so Sony Records. The photo shoot was taking place on the rooftop of Sony Records. Um, so my uh, associate, my assistant, so he's coming with me. He's all excited. Oh my gosh, we're going to Sony. We're going to be on the roof. And for me, like when I'm in work mode, like I'm not even thinking of that. I'm just thinking, okay, I have to think about the light and what light, like I'm, I'm in plan mode. I'm not excited yet. Um, you know, and it wasn't until kind of like after the shoot and of course, something went wrong. Our stylist was like 45 minutes late. We only had an hour for the shoot. Um, and everybody was freaking out and I'm cool as a cucumber. Um, and they're like, well, what are we going to do? He's got to bring, you know, the fashion. Are we going to 15 minutes enough time? And I'm like, more than enough time. Of course it is. Um, and I, instead of having an hour, I only had 15 minutes, but that's all I needed. And that comes from 25 years ago. That's my journalism training, right? So that's knowing that I had 15 minutes to make magic happen. And that's what was thrown at me. Um, and I got really lucky because his agent was gaga over the images, as was my editor. And, you know, it was after that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I was in Sony Records where how many famous people were um, and on the rooftop and how many people can say that. So the opportunity was great. And I knew uh, I didn't know what to expect. And you just have to always be prepared. Wow. Wow. Well, that's crazy. That, that's pretty fantastic. Uh, well, yes, amazing, sir. Veronica. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see you again, um, you know, uh, in some future ones because you're such a wonderful person to have on set. And uh, you. you created, you're, you're an incredible artist. And the images you shot at the workshop were just obviously mind blowing. They got cover the magazine. I've promoted them quite a bit because I just find them so spectacular. Um, but uh, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Of course. Absolutely. After work. <laughs> and, uh, and I know um, we also have uh, the great Terry Moy. Uh, who is joining us as well. So, um, uh, Terry, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to see you on. Hopefully you can, um, you can join us via video. Um, so, and, and by the way, guys, uh, if you guys are um, uh, interested in taking one of these epic workshops, um, go ahead and uh, we are offering a $500 discount off of um, uh, any 20, um, 2020 
upcoming workshop for a four day experience. So you can go ahead and um, click there. Uh, essentially the first day is gonna be the essential day. It's gonna be all about, um, about portfolio development. It's about, um, how we're gonna bring in expert panelists um, similar to um, just like Janice Moses, we're going to have top tier photography agents, art directors, creative directors. Uh, we're also going to be shooting on day one. We're going to be doing uh, lighting demonstrations and portfolio shooting on day one. And, um, and also retouching your images for your portfolio. And then day two is going to be a massive scale photographic um, uh, shoot where you're going to be commanding the set and photographing the greatest images of your career. And, um, and that's going to be just like Veronica did and got published and featured just mind-blowing images, um, it's gonna be a really, really, really incredible um, experience. So uh, for instance, we have our Chicago workshop coming up. Um, so uh, you know, day two is gonna actually be a lifestyle advertising day. Day three is gonna be a massive scale fashion day where it's gonna be a vintage math and editorial. And day four is also gonna be an epic fashion shoot on location um, in Chicago at the Palmer House. So it's gonna be a really exceptional production. And um, just imagine going on set and photographing the, some of the most incredible images of your career. So it's a four day massive scale portfolio development um, experience, just like Veronica had, just like Terry um, experienced as well. Now, Terry, um, so Terry Moy, um, you're a world-class photographer out of the DC area. Um, and um, Terry, uh, you attended both Dallas and New York, is that correct? Um, Dallas and LA. Or LA. Okay. So you attended yeah. Dallas and the Los Angeles workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. You came to the master class, right? I did. Awesome. So you came to the one at, um, we shot at Wieses Pieces uh, mm -hmm. with um, that supermodel, Valena from Vogue. And uh, it's actually featured on the cover of our website. So um, this was really, really spectacular. And I know you came with a group of your other fellow photographer friends. You had, I think, Robert <laughs> Ashby, Adam Friedman, Steve Rugnitz and Terry all came together as a group and it was pretty fantastic. So um, uh, this was all shot at the, um, uh, um, at the Elite Masterclass um, in um, Los Angeles, that's the one she attended. And then the images from Dallas were incredibly epic too, especially in front of that C-130. Um, so, uh, so Terry, um, and, and by the way, Terry, what, um, can you tell me your website? TerryMoy.com. Perfect. So, um, and then uh, let's showcase, oh my goodness, these are gorgeous. So if I go to terrymoy.com, we can take a look at Terry's uh, commercial lifestyle advertising imagery. And um, these were also shot at the masterclass on the lifestyle day. And, um, and she's got some beautiful portraiture here. Love the stuff out at the ranch, different bodies of work here. And then she's got some interiors and portraits. Um, but uh, she uh, created some really fantastic um, imagery um, at uh, the workshop. So, for instance, this is, you know, more of the stuff that we shot. So, you know, and Terry, your work is stunning. I mean, when you have talent like this on your portfolio, um, this completely gives impact. It, it comes off the page. It's like, oh, my goodness, you've shot with a supermodel from Vogue. That's a big deal. That gets me excited. So um, talk to me a little bit about what that experience was like, shooting with top-tier top -tier models like that and how that's kind of impacted your photography. Oh, okay. Thank you. And first, thank you so much for inviting me, Kevin. This is um, a wonderful opportunity. It was wonderful to hear about Janice and what she does and also Veronica hearing her story. So this has been really enlightening. Um, so thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so really what I did was I've been shooting for over 20 years but um, it was more portrait work. So when I came to um, Kevin's workshops, it was really like understanding how the whole production works. Um, because you, before you do this, um, before you go on to one of these workshops, and if you haven't been on photo sets before, you don't realize what all goes into it. I was doing things on my own and I thought I did pretty well. But when I went to one of these, the first production, I learned um, so much. And one of those was the confidence knowing that I could do what I'm doing. And Kevin, you really helped me with that. Um, and basically it was, I guess I can compare it to sort of like if you're going to the store um, and you're going to ride a bicycle to the store, that's what I was doing. And when I went to your class, your workshop, Kevin, it was like getting into the Jaguar and <laughs> going down to the store. So it's a very different um, 
uh, how to get from point A to point B in the photography. And so learning how to work with the, the models and the hair and makeup and the stylist and, and the, what the, I guess the, um, the outcome, what was produced is so far beyond what I'd been producing because I've been using just regular normal people. And so it really helped me understand what you do get by actually getting the top of the top of the top. There is no denying that the outcome, what you produce from that is far superior. Well, I can tell because looking at your work, it, it's powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. And it's also catapulted you as a photographer because from when I met you to where you are now, it's on another level. Just like not only what you shot at the workshop, but also images that you shot outside of the workshop too. I really mm -hmm. feel like it's, it's helped with, you know, some of your creative direction, uh, your casting, um, some of the other details. So, um, but stunning, stunning work here. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, because I went to um, the Ukraine and from, your, from learning from you, I actually cast my own models and I um, did some street photography in the Ukraine and I love the images. Um, now, what I did learn is that it, you really need the stylist too and mm. the hair and makeup. So you can do your own shoots and they're good, but these are great. And like the ones in Jackson Hall, the ones I have at the, the ranch, those are just the girls that actually do do the rides. You know, they do take people out. There's the, the Ukraine. Beautiful. Yeah. But you know what? As beautiful as these are, I do notice a difference in production value um, and stylus. So that's, that's kind of the big differential that, that I think that, that you take away mm -hmm. from it. Um, is uh, and the direct, you know, and how close you are to the talent, the level of model, the level of production. Um, yeah, so, um, but beautiful, beautiful work, Terry. Um, so do you feel like shooting at this workshop, do you feel like it's really empowered you to get bigger opportunities? Oh, absolutely. It gives me the confidence to speak to people that I might not have spoken with in the past because I know how the whole production works. And so understanding what all the key components are, what need to be on set, on site, it's one big puzzle. And when you have all those pieces and you put them all together, that's when you get good images. So I'm learning that you, there are certain components you can't go with that, like the ones with the Ukraine, definitely need styling. Yeah. That would have helped tremendously. She's a beautiful model, but the styling was a mess. Yeah, well, it's it's still excellent though, and you know what, Terry? I think that I would love to to also um, get you on a, a consult to edit down your portfolio too, because I still feel like your portfolio is a little all over the place <laughs> because you've got really strong images, but then I also notice there's some images that don't kind of they're not at the same level as the images, um, for instance, from the workshop. So um, you know, so like I would I would edit that down, you know, um, okay. and then also we have a little bit too much redundancy. So we also don't want to okay. see the same, um, a bunch of the same images from the same scenes. We want to show more variation. Um, but like, you know, but if I see images like this, this kind of model and makeup doesn't compare with, you know, uh, images like this, you know, it's mm -hmm. it. so I want to make sure that everything's cohesive. So if a client mm -hmm. comes to you or if somebody like Janice Moses, you meet an agent like that, you need to show that all your top 30 to 40 images are like this and nothing else is lower than that. That's going to be absolutely key. So going forward, I would encourage you to shoot more high production shoots. Um, I know you're going to be joining us, uh, I believe in Chicago, I think it is. Um, and, uh, and that's going to be incredible um, at the Chicago fashion and lifestyle workshop. But I think that um, that's going to really, we want to edit it down. And even if it's only like a smaller amount of images, but they're only the best of the best creme de la creme, I think that would, will really enhance uh, who you are as a brand, 100%. So, and I um, have to say, yeah. oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that it's, it's wonderful um, for the people who are listening to understand that Kevin does take you by the hand and he does help you along the way. He doesn't just here, come to a workshop and then see you later, come back to another one. He's actually there. And it's, that's, what's been so impressive to me is that he's, he really is um, interested in your growth. I, absolutely. And I'm glad you mentioned that Terry, because that's something that, um, you know, we've been doing this for 11 years and the reason we've been around so long and that we have all five-star reviews everywhere you look online um, is uh, because 
for what we do, we are absolutely dedicated to our photographers, absolutely care to the deepest level. And I have personal consults with Terry, uh, with Veronica, with you know many, many, many of our photographers. But if you look online, that's why we have all raving five-star reviews everywhere you look online, because our photographers have that experience where they know that we care about them deeply. We know and we do. And, I th you know, and I, I'm not interested in people coming and just taking a workshop and leaving. I'm interested in you transforming your photographic career. That's absolutely vital to me because I don't want you to just go back to whatever you're doing before. I want you to catapult to that next level. I want you to be represented by an agent. I want you to land um, large scale advertising campaigns, or I want you to land 10 to $15,000 wedding shoots if that's what you do. I want you to increase how much you're earning. And I want you to not be taken advantage of by clients that want to pay you less than, you know, not what you're worth. I want you to value. And what's important to me is your portfolio. Because if your portfolio can be that world-class level of portfolio and that we can showcase that epic portfolio and you, know, you can shoot, um, uh, you can create something like this, it's really going to be empowering. And by the way, many of you guys did ask where, uh, where I printed this. Um, there is a company, um, I can send you the details if you contact us directly um, or during your photographic consultant, um, consult, um, we can send you the details of how to get these printed. They're very inexpensive. Um, the, the custom made ones are very expensive. <laughs> it's usually something like this ranges between like um, 1,000 and 2,000 um, to make a custom made um, blue suede portfolio. Um, but uh, if you want to have it done with something like this, um, this cost me, um, I think with a discount because you're a friend of the photography workshop series, I think it's like 80 bucks um, for that portfolio. And then it's another like 80 bucks to have the image printed on the cover. I also recommend having it printed on both covers, in the front and back. That way it, um, it adds more gravitas to the body of work. So, um, and then also in, in coordination to that guys, in addition to portfolio, you must have something to come along with the portfolio, okay? So images like this, this is a printed promo that comes with my portfolio. And by the way, we're gonna talk in depth about this at our Marketing for Photographers virtual workshop that's gonna be on June 27th. Um, and it's gonna be a six hour intensive on how to maximize your marketing. And it's gonna include developing your print promos, your um, portfolio, um, how to market your portfolio, how to connect with decision makers, because the portfolio is key, but we also need to know how to market it and get into those decision makers and be able to book those jobs, whether it's consumer photography, commercial photography, fashion photography, et cetera. So these are just a few examples of some printed uh, promo pieces uh, that we've done over the years. And I'm gonna show you how to develop these and market um, to your audience. So um, that way um, it can really help with um, you know, essentially getting your brand out there. So um, I, uh, I strongly encourage you guys to attend that one. That's also a very, very good value. Um, the beautiful thing about, um, about that workshop is that it's, and it's on Zoom, so it's from the privacy of your own home. And um, I wanna make sure that uh, you know, if you guys uh, can't fly out and make it to one of our in-person workshops, at least you can come and attend one of these. Um, we are offering as being an attendee of this, this um, webinar, um, we are offering a $200 discount off of enrolling in the, um, the Marketing for Photographers workshop, which is on June 27th. Um, so instead of it being $795, it's only $595 um, to attend um, the Marketing for Photographers workshop. Um, and it's already actually almost sold out because a lot of our photographers from the past one that we just did, uh, it was such a great success. A lot of them are now enrolled um, and a lot of new photographers as well. So if you guys want to see more information about that, of course, you can go to our website on photographyworkshopseries.com and uh, you can take a look at, um, uh, at what we're going to be doing. It's going to be all about not only, okay, you've developed this epic portfolio. Now what do you do with it? Now you go and market it. Now you connect with the decision makers, how to get in touch with the, the decision makers. They're going to hire you on the opportunities that you essentially want. Um, I also have some examples of some of our past um, webinars talking about this and all the details of what this intensive experience is gonna be about. And what's unique about this is it's not just like a webinar on marketing, it's something where it's interactive and you and I are gonna personally go over and develop a photographic marketing strategy plan that's going to be specific to you during the workshop. It's gonna be pretty awesome and you can also get to experience seeing all the other marketing plans are developing with the other photographers. So it's very, um, it's going to be very high end. It's going to be an incredible experience. And like I said, it's only 795. 
uh, but we're offering a $200 discount for those of you guys who are um, going to be, or attending right now. So if you guys wanna do that, um, go ahead and click that link um, in the chat and you can enroll with that, um, that $200 discount. So, um, all right, so uh, Terry, um, when you were on set, what did it feel like to shoot with, because you had never really shot with a model like Valena, like a supermodel before. How did it make you feel to have an, an entire set at your disposal with a massive scale production and to be able to photograph a supermodel in front of your camera? What, what did that feel like? Oh, well, I tell you, when you have a supermodel, and by the way, my, my computer's about to drop, but if it does, it's oh, gonna no run problem. out of battery. Um, but basically, it was just easier having someone who knew exactly what to do compared to trying to tell some one who wants to be a model what to do. She just moved so fluidly and would just just listen and, and even did some of her own incredible, just smooth um, hand movements and so forth. So it was just wonderful working with someone. They're professional. It's all it's just they're professional. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Terry. And I know you have to run. So go ahead. Um, thank, thank you so you. much for joining. You are absolute okay. joy. And um, we're, we're, you know, um, uh, going to be kind of going over last few questions. Now is a good time to answer, to ask questions, guys, if you want um, to, uh, to, to know more um, about uh, what we do and about how to develop portfolios. Uh, so I'm going to answer one from a Jill Lotenberg. Um, she says, how does it actually work that your work looks different than other attendees at the workshop? What is the shoot schedule? How many people attend? Excellent question, Jill. Um, so I'd love to uh, go over this. So first of all, the workshops are designed to be very, very exclusive, very high end, and to be very personalized to each photographer attending. Now, you're going to be commanding a set and you're going to be photographing. And when you're shooting, you're commanding the set. Nobody else is photographing. You're commanding the set. That's really important to me because I want to make sure that you are the one photographing and you are controlling the scene when you're shooting. And we're gonna shoot a whole series of different scenes. That's a beautiful thing about this. Uh, typically we shoot anywhere between six to 16 scenes in a day, depending on which workshop. So if it's a swim workshop, it's more like 10 to 16 scenes in a day. If it's a high end, high production fashion workshop, there's a ton of setup and huge production. It's like six to 10 scenes in a day. So what that means is, is that each scene, you're gonna get a new page in your portfolio. So if you're taking a four day workshop and you're gonna be shooting on all four days, you can walk away with pretty much 40 pages of a portfolio from that workshop. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so, and, and you know what? Um, what's cool is, is although the models, obviously other photographers there are gonna be shooting those models, in answer to your question, um, the photographer's work all looks very different um, because everybody photographs with a different style. They shoot with different angles, different focal lengths. They also um, have a different art direction. So every photographer attending is gonna shoot a vastly different look, feel, and story than the other photographers. So it's a pretty incredible experience, Jill. I highly encourage um, that you attend uh, our upcoming workshop in Newport Beach um, coming up in July. I believe there's one spot left. And then um, the Chicago workshops, which has been sold out for about six months. Uh, but since we adjusted the dates due to COVID, um, we did have one spot open up in that one as well. So I'd highly encourage that. Um, and they're very, very exclusive experiences. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, uh, okay, so I was, uh, uh, let's see, Liam was gonna ask if you participated in the estimate building and sales. Um, uh, good to know, thank you. Okay, so I think that was in regards to bidding on advertising jobs, which I, we did talk about. We are gonna go over that at the workshop itself. Um, and uh, we had a lot of questions about the printed portfolio, so I encourage you guys to all get your portfolios printed. And I, and I, um, I know kind of a secret of what I do. I know it's kind of crazy, but I actually, uh, the printing of my photographs, believe it or not, I print them at Costco. I do. I, um, I know how to print on the high-end Epson printers. I have all these high-end print labs in Los Angeles, but Costco has these $100,000 laser argon printers that are world-class and they print the highest quality prints. So I uh, use those printers and I have for a decade now and I've, sh and I've printed really spectacular prints and they're only like $3 for 11 by 14, something like that, they're ridiculous. Um, and, and they're quick because you can, um, uh, you can upload the images online and SRGB, uh, I'm sorry, you wanna convert them to that um, specific Costco's printer profile and make sure that it, the color profile matches, print it, takes about an hour and you can go and pick them up. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that. So um, yeah, and, and Frank Flavin says, yeah, Costco does a great job. I totally, totally agree. I think it's really, 
um, you know, really, really a great opportunity um, because they are everywhere and the quality is consistent. Um, I've actually never had any issues with color um, and I'm very, very, uh, you know, a stickler when it comes to it. And by the way, guys, if you do want to learn more about marketing your portfolio, um, make sure to, um, uh, to click on the link um, that is going to be here in the chat on, um, you can go ahead and enroll with a $200 discount. So it's only $5.95 to attend the marketing for a photographer um, experience. Now, if you guys want to see what the actual workshop feels like, um, I'm going to share with you uh, a video of what the, the, um, what the actual workshop is like to be on set. Um, it's going to be shooting on set. And for instance, this was one we did on the rooftop of LA Fashion Magazine. And uh, we shot, well, I can tell you all about it here. production. And every little detail comes together for this epic moment. My name is Kevin Michael Schmitz. I'm a celebrity fashion advertising photographer. I specialize in just creating stories and telling stories and making them completely over the top uh, by art directing, storyboarding, and then putting it into production and creating this epic editing. See this beautiful space that we're shooting at at the penthouse suites of the Los Angeles Fashion Magazine. And from the top models from the Lamina. We brought in the director of LA Fashion Week, Ariana Sinclair, on wardrobe, bringing in an entire collection from Dubai. And then, so working with America's Next Top Models makeup artist, who's Maker Kowski, and the creative director from L'Oreal, Rodrigo Jackson, on here. What I'm able to do for you guys is to create this insane production that you're going to be able to connect with and network with these top industry professionals. How you want to photograph it, how you want to graphically create and then capture the moments of what you really, really want. That is what fashion editor for me. So that's essentially a little bit of a rundown of what the experience is like um, to build your portfolio at one of our epic workshops. Now that's a fashion workshop, but we also have workshops on wedding photography, portrait photography, lifestyle advertising, and swim. So if you guys are interested, um, go ahead and um, you know we can get you involved. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, I know we've had a ton of questions and before I go, I just wanted to um, answer a few of them because you have a lot of, um, a lot of really good ones. Um, so, uh, um, Kenneth Scott, you asked a question, which, by the way, Kenneth is one of our uh, amazing premier photographers that has attended about five or six workshops. How should I sequence my images in my portfolio, and how many images should I have? Well, Kenneth, I feel like not only currently your um, portfolio is actually pretty well sequenced as it is, um, I think that there are a few images that we could move them around, but I like to have a sequence where as long as there's a strong flow and they have a similar feel between the look, feel, and style, the demographics, the, um, uh, the, the style of photography, it tends to, um, to flow together. Now, I feel like, um, this, Kenneth, this is your website, and, uh, and if we go to um, you know, a body of work like this, I feel like overall, you know, I'm feeling a pretty good flow uh, to your photography. And, um, and you know, you're, you're not being too redundant, you're having a lot of different scenes, um, and, I feel like right now it actually has a pretty good flow. There's a few images we might want to move uh, in front of others and stuff like that. But overall, I'm really, really loving this feel. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very excited about um, the flow of what you did. And you also have a printed section. Um, and then you have some really great stuff on the front page. That was all shot out our workshops, by the way. Really fantastic. And he was a panelist, I think. Uh, once or twice at some of our webinars, and Kenneth has been an absolute um, amazing human being to get involved with. So if you guys do want to get involved in uh, one of those four-day epic experiences um, to build your portfolio, go ahead and click on that link to um, go ahead and enroll that special discount. Um, and, um, and I really encourage you guys to get ready, because now 
you know, 2020 going into 2020 and 2021, it's all about having an epic portfolio, marketing it to the highest level. Um, now, for those of you guys who try to set up um, portfolio reviews, uh, we, um, uh, everybody booked up all of our spots. So it got completely booked up. So we just opened up some more availability. So if you guys haven't scheduled one, go ahead and click now and it should be some more open slots for you guys to schedule. Uh, also, if, um, I believe it's starting basically the Saturday onward um, for these consults. Uh, but if you guys, uh, we, we are um, open over the next couple of days as well. Uh, but we're just really slammed, but we'd love to talk with you as well um, today, tomorrow, and Friday. So if you guys do want to talk with us uh, about whether you're getting involved with one of these epic workshops or going over um, your portfolio for just a free portfolio review, um, let us know. You can please, you can go ahead and contact us. Uh, you can also email um, our, um, uh, my uh, director, I, um, Ivan, directly. And um, you can also set something up with him personally. Um, and I put his email there in the chat. Um, so uh, thank you guys. You had some amazing questions um, and I'm, I'm really proud of the photographers that have attended, um, Veronica and Terry. Um, and I'm also really grateful and thankful for um, Janice because Janice Moses represents, she was an incredible resource. Um, so grateful to have somebody of her caliber on this webinar um, to talk with you guys because um, it's really, really incredible uh, to have an opportunity to speak to an agent because many of you guys should aspire to be represented um, uh, with an agent of that level. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty fantastic. And it doesn't matter what level you guys are at. If you guys are, you know, been shooting for 50 years or if you're new or whatever, um, you know, I, I, we talk to all photographers at all different levels. Um, and we also have workshops for photographers at different levels. So if you are a more sophisticated, high end advanced photographer, we recommend also in addition to our regular four day experiences, we have our elite masterclass, which is the one that Terry attended. Uh, which was our most over the top and a high end advanced workshop of the year. Where we're gonna bring in seven of the biggest decision makers in LA and we're gonna be shooting an equivalent of about $100,000 a day production. Um, so last couple of questions and then we'll run. Um, Sean Hamilton asks, uh, do workshop participants get model releases uh, uh, for their images? So absolutely, um, we uh, do model releases, of course, for everyone that we photograph and film. And by the way, not only are we photographing them, we're also filming, uh, for instance, at the Newport Beach workshop with an 8K red helium camera and creating epic video content to collaborate with your imagery. So um, definitely incredible opportunity because right now everybody wants not just photography, but they want video as well and, and um, film production. We're going to be working um, with our top tier camera operator who films on major motion pictures. Um, and um, he does a lot of incredible stuff. He's going to be there with the 8K Red Helium. Um, so, but yeah, absolutely. We have model releases uh, for you to use as much as you want, not only the photography, but also the video that we're filming. You're going to have full rights to use it for all your marketing and self-promotion um, use for your photography. Um, and, um, and also getting published in magazines because every workshop that we direct gets published in a nationally published magazine. So that's pretty um, pretty fantastic. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, um, uh, we have, uh, let's see any, it looks like a lot of our questions were answered by our photographic consultants, Marcelo and Zach. Uh, so excellent. Thank you guys. And I do recommend you guys set up consults to continue the conversation, um, with one of our photographic consultants personally. So you can have your own photographic consultant. Um, uh, Studio Tyner mentioned he has three websites, each with two to three books on it. I think that's brilliant. Um, I think, uh, Tyner, I think that's exactly what we should be doing. I do that myself. I have all my different brands and they're all dialed in very specifically uh, for my audience. So I think that's absolutely a brilliant way to do it. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I, uh, this is another question from Amy Stafford. I worked in film stills for a decade, now family wall portraits for a decade. I really like the freedom allowed in my current area. Would commercial work have that flexibility? I'm thinking not, but it would be more like the film industry. Thoughts? So, you know, commercial photography, um, like as Marcelo says, um, uh, they all depend on the contract and they're all different. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility in commercial. Um, and I think that what's beautiful about it is that generally when you're shooting commercial advertising, you're doing fewer shoots, but you're making more per shoot. So instead of making, you know, a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, you, you know, I typically, my lowest budget job is 30,000 and it goes up to, um, you know, three, 400,000 per job. So, um, for as you know, that's $300,000 budget for like a three, four day job. 
So it just depends on what it is and who the client is. And a lot of it depends on the usage and um, all of that. But we're going to go in depth about that actually at our Newport Beach workshop coming up in July um, that I highly recommend you guys get involved with because it's an epic experience. We're going to be shooting at 10 to $16 million mansions in Newport Beach and Laguna Beach. And uh, we're going to be shooting with AK Red Helium for video. We're going to be shooting with gimbals, drones, um, on sliders for video. We're going to be photographing and I'm going to be showing you all my manipulation of natural light so you can master a lifestyle portfolio. So you can get that, that look, feel, and style that Janice was really impressed at. We're going to go specifically how to maximize that portfolio. So I'm super excited, guys. And I'm absolutely honored that you guys have uh, joined us today. Um, and I want you guys to also encourage you to also go on our website and um, watch some of the rest of the webinars that we have. Um, and if you guys are um, uh, interested in, a, in uh, setting up a review with one of our photographic consultants, go ahead and click that link um, in the chat and um, we will see you guys soon. So anyway, it was an absolute pleasure and I cannot wait to see what each and every one of you guys do to master your portfolio and take your photographic career to the highest level of its potential. Take care guys and I'll see you soon.